By the year 1180, the Crusader states of Palestine were in decline. Few troops arrived from Europe and Guy of Lusignan had been chosen as the new king of Jerusalem after a tough succession struggle. There was a fragile truce with the Ayyubid Sultan of Egypt, Saladin, which was broken after the assault on a Muslim caravan by Reynald of Chitilan, an ally of King Guy. On July 2, 1187, Saladin decided to besiege the fortress of Tiberias. His plan was to get the Christians to come out of their castles to go to the aid of the fortress and thus be able to face them in a pitched battle and defeat them more easily. For this he had assembled an army made up of Egyptian, Syrian, Turkish and Iraqi troops. In total 12,000 light cavalry and about 18,000 infantry. Saladin commanded the central body of his army, the right flank was directed by his nephew Taki al-Din and the left by Gakbori. King Guy assembled his forces at Siphorus. He had an army of 1,200 knights, from the different crusader kingdoms and knights hospitaller and templars. In addition to an infantry force of about 14,500 soldiers and 4,000 Turkopoles, light cavalry from the region hired as mercenaries. To assemble this army, they had to withdraw defenders from Christian cities and castles. Ignoring the advice of several of his barons that it would be better to wait for Saladin to come against them, he decided to march towards Tiberias, in the middle of summer and through arid terrain. On July 3, the Christian army entered the arid plain of Torin. It did not take long for them to begin to be harassed by the Saracen light cavalry. During the march, the heat was stifling for the armored Christian knights and attacks and ambushes by Saladin's cavalry were continuous. At noon they realized that they would not be able to reach Tiberias before nightfall, so they decided to march towards the village of Hattin, which was closer and where there was a water source. From there they could quickly reach the fortress the next day. Saladin sent Taki al-Din's division to block the road to Hattin while he continued to close the main road east to Tiberias. Meanwhile, Gatbori continued with his attacks on the Christian rearguard and on the Turkopole cavalry, which was the only Christian force that could face his light cavalry. The Templars attempted a charge to drive the attackers away, but failed. Unable to force his troops past, King Guy ordered the exhausted and thirsty army to camp on a barren plateau, surrounded by grassy hills, near the village of Meskina. The Islamic army was positioned at close range, surrounding the crusaders on all sides. At night, Saladin's men gathered and stacked piles of firewood along the intended line of march of the crusaders. At dawn on July 4, the crusader leaders decided to form in order of battle and advance. Count Raymond III of Tripoli commanded the vanguard of the army, King Guy the center and Balian of Ibel in the rear. Thirsty and demoralized, the three divisions of the Crusader army headed for the Hattin waterhole. The Muslims set fire to the firewood and dry grass on the hills to the west of the Crusader army. The wind carried the smoke towards them, blinding and suffocating them. At the same time, Gakbori's light cavalry started firing at them, creating more confusion. Such was the thirst and low morale of the Christians that several knights deserted. <laughs> Saladin sent the attack to his center and his left flank. The Templars counterattacked, initially managing to push back Gakbori's troops. Meanwhile, Raymond's vanguard charged Taki al-Din's right flank, trying to open the way to the Hattin pit. They were about to break through the Muslim ranks but, after hard fighting, they had to go back.
This attack did weaken the connection between the flank of Taki al-Din and the body commanded by Saladin. Seeing this, Saladin reinforced the right wing of his division to prevent it. Following these setbacks, the morale of the Christian infantry began to break. The west wind continued to carry smoke from the fires towards the crusaders. As a measure of protection against Muslim cavalry attacks, King Guy ordered the army to halt and erect their tents, but in the confusion of the battle they only managed to erect three, southwest of the horns of Hatim. At the same time, Count Raymond made a new charge to the north. His idea was to open a gap through which the entire army could reach the village of Hatim. This time, Taki al-Din had his soldiers move to the west of Nimran Hill and let the Christians through, then close ranks again. The narrow and steep slope that Raymond's cavalry advanced on made it impossible for him to turn back and charge up the hill, so he continued his march towards Tiberias and later towards Tyre. On the plateau, the confusion among the Christian ranks was increasing and much of the infantry fled towards the North Horn. King Guy gave orders for the North Horn troops to return and help them, but they refused due to exhaustion. Guy advanced to the Horns, taking position on the southern ridge and pitching the royal tent on it. Taki al-Din's troops charged into the southern Horn. After surrounding the horns, the Muslims also attacked the North Horn. The Christian knights regrouped on the small plain between the two horns and made several charges, managing to get close to where Saladin was. However, they were finally defeated and the Muslims took control of that area. The Muslim victory was confirmed by destroying the royal tent in the southern horn and seizing the true cross, the most sacred relic for Christianity. This marked the end of the battle. The exhausted Christians threw themselves to the ground without further opposition. A large part of the Crusader rearguard, including their leader, Balian of Ibelin, managed to break the encirclement of Gakbori's division and flee to the south. About 3,000 Christians managed to escape the battle, 15,000 died and the rest were captured. King Guy of Lusignan was taken prisoner, as was Reynald of Chitilan, Saladin's worst enemy. In his own tent and as Saladin had promised, he executed it with his own hands. Guy was freed the following year along with the rest of the nobles after paying a ransom. Turcopoles and knights of the military orders were executed. Captured foot soldiers were sold into slavery. Not having an army that could oppose him, Saladin divided his forces and conquered 52 cities and fortresses in three months, Tiberias, Acre, Sidon, Beirut, Ashkelon were the most important. It was on October 2, 1187 when Jerusalem surrendered to Saladin, thus achieving his main objective. Hattin was a decisive battle as it allowed the rapid recovery of the Holy Land for Islam marking the end of the Kingdom of Jerusalem. <laughs>